Hello, we're John Apostolic Church family and those who are visiting with us today. We have another opportunity today to be able to give God the glory for a healing that he's brought to somebody who is connected with our church. And again, we want to be good stewards of the testimony and make sure that we're giving God the glory for all that he's done. And we really believe that as um, we share this testimony today, that it will also unlock faith in those who are watching and we'll see God move in miraculous ways again. So we really see it as a domino effect that as we give God the, the glory for something, then it almost invites him in to do it again. And so as we join our faith uh, together, then we can see God move in power. So today we've got Olga with us today and also with uh, her mom, Imparo, uh, who's uh, joined us uh, as well. And it's actually Olga's mom who uh, experienced the healing, but Olga's mom is not, uh, her first language is not English, so Olga's going to be the one that tells most of the story here today. And, uh, but we're going to give uh, her mom also a chance to be able to speak in Spanish uh, at the end as well and so especially for those that would be out there that are Spanish speaking just to be able to hear a little bit directly from her and then probably Olga will mm -hmm. help translate uh, some of that as well. So Olga just by way of, of introduction I'm sure that people from the church uh, will recognize you. Uh, Olga's often uh, dancing and flagging in the church and is a you know loves clearly loves Jesus with all of uh, all of her heart she and her husband and then they've also uh, got family members who've been a part of this church as well in the past uh, Emmanuel was uh, at this church for a long time and of course he's run away to Calgary on us yeah. now but uh, <laughs> he's still a uh, hold a special spot in this church that's for sure but just by way of uh, introduction just why don't you just tell uh, us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your uh, your mom as well um, hi uh, like you say, um, my name is Olga, and this is my mom, Amparo. We are part of the uh, Regina Apostolic Church. Um, this is my home church. Uh, I love to be here. Uh, I love the pastors. I love everything. Um, um, for I'm here for 15 years, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And we are from Colombia. Mm. Uh, like you said, I had two boys, uh, Andres and Emmanuel, mm -hmm. and uh, he's in Calgary, he's doing good, mm -hmm. he's doing good. And um, yeah, we had a testimony uh, about healing. Yeah. yeah. So why don't you tell us, I, I know it was, as we said, it was your mom that actually experienced the testimony, but why don't you just give us a few details of, of what had happened to her, and, and, and obviously there was a reason why she needed uh, prayer and forgot to intervene, and so just kind of tell us what, what had happened and... and uh, what was the diagnosis that she received and just walk us through that story of what led up to her needing prayer yeah um a month before that everything happened um i had a dream hmm. and in that dream uh i just saw her to fall in a hole hmm. and i saw a, a a hand rescue her hmm. and put it in the, in the floor and give her life but hmm. i was crying and crying there and I just phoned my son and I asked, I, I say, I had a dream and this is my dream. And he say, we need to pray about that. Mm -hmm. And he say, pray that God give you a revelation about that and I'm, I'm going to pray too. Mm -hmm. And a week after he phoned me and he say, mom, um, God showed me something about the dream. And then he say, uh, I think we need to start to pray now mm -hmm. because something is going to happen with grandma. Mm -hmm. And he's going to use this to fix things at home. Mm. And just think um, if it's something that you need to deal with grandma or my dad or something at home that is not aligned with, you know, things. Mm. And yeah, pray. After that, uh, three weeks after, uh, my mom gave COVID. Mm -hmm. And I just remember the dream. She was at home, like um, good, and my son came from BC, and he say he say like a uh, grandma look like a uh, I don't know. I want to take her to to the clinic, mm -hmm. and he say why? And he said, I don't know. I just feel, mm -hmm. and then he took her to the clinic, and when she was there, um, the nurses say how this lady function hmm. his oxygen levels are in 60 percent oh, wow, okay. we need to send her to to the emergency right now okay and then my son phoned me and he said mom 
I'm going to Pasqua with grandma. Mm -hmm. And I say, what happened? And he said, I don't know, they need to check on her. Mm -hmm. And he phoned me around 8 p.m. That was around 2 p.m. And he said, mom, grandma's in coma. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? Wow. Yeah, she's in coma. And I was with Kobe too mm -hmm. uh, I was unable to go mm -hmm. and he said she's in coma and that was the last time that I saw her wow okay. yeah and that was when everything started mm. yeah and so do, she was at the clinic uh, and that was where they diagnosed her with COVID or was it by the time they they got to the hospital and at the time the that check, she yeah got to the she hospital. got to the hospital wow. yeah so she had she was diagnosed with COVID and then her oxygen levels were at 60 percent yeah 60 percent wow yeah. and then just within the, that short number of hours then she slipped into a coma yeah she wow yeah. the next day the doctor phoned me and he said uh the oxygen that she needs is no it's not possible to give her. We need, we're going to translate, uh, transfer her to Saskatoon. To Saskatoon, okay. And I say, but uh, nobody's. The, we don't have family there. We are here. I'm, I'm sick with COVID too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that can be happen because, no, that can be happen. She need to stay here. Mm -hmm. And he say we're going to see what we can do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they wanted to transfer her to, to Saskatoon, and, and obviously, yeah, like you said, with you all being here, I'm sure yeah. that was a bit uh, troubling that they wanted to move her, move her to a different city. So what, what happened next? Yeah, because they said that uh, um, the pneumonia was severe, okay. and she only she started to get in from 60 to uh, 55, 35 liters of oxygen, mm. and that's why that they need to transfer her to Saskatoon. Okay. After that, after a week, she was here at Pasqua, and a week after that, um, they called me and they say to me, we're going to um, make a room here at the Pasqua, you need to come and we need to talk to you. Mm. I went there with my son and they say to me like a mom is not doing good mm. nothing is working with her any anything that we put on her is working mm. um we get 10 percent of life mm. if you want we can disconnect her now mm. or we can w wait another week and i said no mm. you had 10 percent of life and god had 90 percent of mm. life wow Lord. he is in control of everything she's going to be okay don't worry i mm. said to him don't worry mm -hmm. i was crying and yeah. my son said to me like a mom it's, it's you know they is that job that they i say yeah but god is in control mm. don't worry mm -hmm. and right away when i get out from the hospital i start to phone every single christian brother and sister <laughs> that i know mm. here in canada states colombia chile I just phoned all my brothers and sisters, and that day I remember that God showed me how big is my family. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel lonely, sometimes I feel that we are only three people in Regina, <laughs> yeah. but God showed me that day how big is my family in Christ. Mm -hmm. wow. And we start to pray, we have prayer meetings, mm -hmm. um, Fridays, mm -hmm. and that time start, you know, Go and she was no good, no good, no good. Mm -hmm. I bring someone to the hospital to have a meeting with all the doctors, and they say nothing works. Not good. Okay. Not good. No good. And so at that point, was she still at ten? You know, ten percent oxygen yeah. level. Okay. Well, yeah. was wow. no good. Okay. Yeah. So obviously we, there were still lots of people praying behind the scenes, and you were, you know, clearly persevering with the medical system that you weren't wanting to unplug her uh, yeah. that you wanted to persevere so uh, so at what point then uh, did things start to shift because obviously she's, she's here with us so there, yeah that's, <laughs> we know there's a good ending to this story yeah. it doesn't sound good in the moment yeah. but uh, when did things then start to uh, start to shift um, the day that they phoned me and say that she's not going to make one of the sisters from church here, she phoned me and she said, Olga, I was praying for you and your mom, and God said to me, I had a purpose. And I said to him, what kind of purpose, what kind of plan? She must speak English. <laughs> and he said, I had, I had a plan. She's there. And I just started thinking about every day, they put a computer there, 
and I connect with my phone. Mm -hmm. And when I was at home, I call every single day. Mm -hmm. I worship and pray, mm -hmm. worship and pray. And one of those days, one of the nurse was there and she said to me, like I, I saw her around and around and she said, I don't know why, but I can leave the room. Mm -hmm. It's so peaceful here. I don't know, understand anything that you said, mm -hmm. but I feel peace. Wow. And I remember that when she said that he had a plan for her. Mm -hmm. And after that, I asked for permission to go there every day. I bring my Bible, and I was outside of those big glasses, and I see you. Mm -hmm. And I get a surprise when I I was there, and the nurses bring a um, CD player, mm -hmm. and they uh, ask me for worship. Mm -hmm. and. Oh, I don't know who bring worship, and she was with worship in her room. Hmm. Wow. And I said, that's, that's your plan, God. Mm -hmm. And I continue praying there, and worship there, and pray. And three weeks after that, I received a phone call. They call me, and they say, Mom is awake. Hmm. She's waking now. Come here, come here. Wow. And that day was amazing. Wow. That day was amazing. She wake up. Just, she just wake up. Wow. So that seems like it was just yeah, kind of unexpected. Yeah, she just wake up like, a, yeah, like wow. a nothing happened, yeah. Wow. And so that was, did yeah. you say three weeks Three weeks later? after, yeah. Okay. 18 days, yeah. Wow. She was 18 days in coma. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And so obviously in that time where you're able to have worship music playing and you've got the nurses, it sounds like they're helping to be the you know, orchestra leader for you there to keep the worship music going. Like that's, what a miracle that is yeah. too. Yeah, but during that time... Um, I was praying and I was asking God, where's the, why, mm -hmm. why this? Yep. It's like a more, show me, mm. show me with all this, do you want me to do something, is something that you want to do in us, mm. like a family, and he showed me, mm. like that I was with issues, like a, from my childhood that mm. I never talked to her, I never hmm. fix it, I never say anything, and was pain on my heart. Okay. And I start to repent, hmm. to forgive, wow. and I ask God to give me a second chance. I say to him like, a, she is in your hands, mm -hmm. you are in control, mm -hmm. but I'm going to ask you for only one thing. Mm -hmm. Please give me that time to talk to her. Mm -hmm. wow. I need to talk to her. Yeah. I need to tell her that I forgive her for um, things when I was little and, child, you know, a child, yeah, and I need to ask her for forgiveness too hmm. because like like a sons and daughters, like a we made mistakes yeah. and we, yeah. And one day uh, I was in the camera when I saw her suffocate at the, there and I was driving to the hospital and I remember that I just lay down on the floor and I asked him, please, please give me that mm. chance. Mm. I need to talk to her. Mm. And the next day when I came, when I went to the hospital, as soon as I came in, I saw the bed was clean, they cleaning the bed, the room was open, and I just get on my knees because I think she's done. Mm. And I know how the time to talk to her and anything. And the nurse came right away and said, no, 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 come, come. And she was sitting in a wheelchair mm -hmm. there. And I said, God, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and I just, I just came in and put my things there. And I say to myself, like, a, oh, Javier is working today. And then I heard a voice that she say, oh, he's working today? And I respond to myself, yeah, he's working today. And then I, oh. Are you talking, Mom? <laughs> and she said, I'm talking. <gasps> wow. Just crying. <laughs> Praise and, the Lord. Yeah, like, a, yeah, because wow. she was like, a, yeah. So not only was she awake, but she was able to yeah, talk and understand yeah. and hear and everything. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, and they the, just, I hear from the doctors and nurses, wow, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Because she came like a, like a normal that she was came before, back. yeah, with everything. Wow. They say that, that she maybe she's going to be like a, with this and this and that, mm -hmm. and yeah, no, she came in the same way that she was before. Wow, so there was no lingering effects mm -hmm. then of it, it? Wow, 
Well, praise the Lord for that. Because, yeah, that, I mean, with COVID, obviously there's, you hear stories of people who have long COVID symptoms and, you know, they have breathing issues or things like that. But she's just come back out better than ever, it sounds yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Is. I've seen her, seen her around church. And, again, because we're not really able to talk to each other because of the language barrier. But I can see and tell that she seems to be the... The same, you know, uh, peaceful, happy, joyful, yeah. you know, loving to worship woman that she always uh, has been. She's a, a joy to have in the house for sure. And she loved to be here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, and you know, it's funny, just while I'm thinking about this, I know even in worship, again, there's a, a language barrier that's there, but there's no there's no language barrier with the Holy Spirit, is there? And I know even in times where we're singing or where we're in a service together, and I'll, I'll hear her sometimes just shout out, hallelujah. So I know, like, there's something that, and I know the Lord's doing something, and then I know that, yeah, there's, uh, it makes you even think about what heaven will look like, right? Every tribe and tongue and, and uh, from every culture and every nation around the globe, everybody will be gathered around the throne room together. And so it makes me think of that, that maybe we can't communicate with words, but we can communicate in our spirits to yeah. know that, uh, the, the same thing that makes her say hallelujah is the same thing that makes me say hallelujah. So <laughs> it's uh, it's great to be in a service together like that. So, Amen. so that is so good. So the you know obviously the prayers were answered and there's there's nothing kind of uh, lingering other than to just keep sharing the the testimony of God's uh, God's goodness in it all. It's in yeah. just absolutely miraculous and incredible and I could keep saying wow 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 wow. It's just yeah. marvelous. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I had I, I when I went to church after that I had a vision. God gave me a vision and he said to me, I hear really clear like a she is a miracle. Mm -hmm. And you go in church to church mm -hmm. and talk about this. Yes. Just that I, I'm a lovely God. Mm -hmm. His mercy have mercy with us. He yeah. loved us so much Absolutely. and he healed. Absolutely. And this time he continued healing people. Yeah, amen. And not amen. only physical healing, but he healed our hearts. Yes. Our emotions, everything. Yeah. When he went to work in us, he just come and do things. Sometimes we're thinking, oh, wow, this happened to me. We don't need to ask why. What is, has a reason for that. Yeah. And we need to start to, like, um, seeking or him continue seeking him with all our heart mm -hmm. continue believing him yeah. continue loving him no matter what happened mm -hmm. no matter how is the result no matter how is the end we continue seeking him and loving him yeah. with all our heart yeah. our soul our mind yeah. because Amen. he know what he's doing Absolutely. he know and everything is for good. Yeah, everything good. is for good. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, as we've seen in this story, I mean, we've talked about her physical healing, but even even this opportunity for the two of you to have the, you know, the uh, conversations about you know what happened, you know, years ago, and there's been this, you know, deepening relationship with the two of you that's come out of it as well. Where you've been able to have that conversation with her too. So, God uh, heals us emotionally in that way too, and there's all of the extra benefits that go along with that so yeah that is good yeah He's so before we we close i want to make sure she has a chance to sort of say what whatever's on her heart as well and if you feel like you need to translate then that's okay and if nothing else it'll be for all of our spanish yeah, speakers yeah. oh she said that i forgot like a, when she was out she was with i can pronounce that like a track Oh, tracheotomy? Yeah. yeah. And she was intubated. She was intubated. Okay. And the doctor said, like, uh, this is going to be for month. Mm. That was on Monday. By Wednesday, done. Wow. By Friday, done. Wow. Nothing, no hole, healed anything. Up. Yeah, was healed. Wow. Like a heal. They say, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, yeah. and even just to have her voice back, because sometimes yeah. that gets affected too. So that's, that's no, marvelous. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I, when he... When he healing us, when he working in us, he go a hundred percent. He no go like a sixty or fifty or no. He <laughs> go with yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, yeah. She. Que se quiere compartir algo. Ay, sí. Yo le doy gracias a Dios todopoderoso. She thanks God. Que me dio otra oportunidad de vida. That gave her another opportunity of life. Lo que Dios hizo. Yo no sé cómo hay gente que no cree en Dios. Si Dios es grande, poderoso, she milagroso. She don't know how people don't believe in him. Dios es amor. Yeah, his love. Yo le doy gracias a Dios todopoderoso. 
y a los a todos los los de la iglesia a los pastores a la congregación de esta iglesia a de la iglesia en, en español también todos familia todo mundo oro por mí le doy gracias a Dios porque gente que no cree vean los milagros patentes she thanks God uh, for everything also for um, church community family uh, our um, our Spanish community mm -hmm. our Spanish church um, because they pray for her mm -hmm. they believe is pray is uh, one but believe mm -hmm. When you believe, you pray and you believe, mm. yeah, it's yeah. coming, yeah. That's really good. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thanks, God. Well, as we close today, is it okay if we just pray together in all of the things that we've talked about today? Um, that we're just going to believe, as I said at the beginning, that God's going to do it again. You know, in the same way that, Amen. I guess I want to pick up on the one thought you had there that, you know, God heals 100%. You know, we, he died on the cross. He was 100% dead. And he 100% came back to life again. And so, yeah, that's what we have access to with God to be able to move in those situations to bring things back to 100%. So um, this is just so good. I really believe that God's going to use this testimony just to uh, see his Holy Spirit move again and, and bring healing. Yeah. yeah, we just need to surrender to him, mm -hmm. surrender everything. And yes. wait in him, and yeah, wait until he he comes and yeah. and Amen. deal with our stuff. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Well, that's so good. Well, let's just pray. Lord, I am so thankful for this story, God. It's uh, it's moving my heart today, God, and I know that for everyone who will hear it, God, it will impact them in the same way, God. I pray that all of our faith would rise, Lord. Where. Maybe we haven't thought that you're able to do something, Lord. I'm thankful that today, even as Olga has persevered, Lord, where she had the chance to say it's, it's at 10%, her mom was at 10%, and to just kind of let her go, but she didn't let her go. She persevered, and she kept her faith in you, Lord, and we're thankful that you rewarded that faithfulness and rewarded those prayers with having this precious uh, sister of ours uh, with us here today. So, Jesus, we love you. We love you for all that you do. We love that you died on the cross for us. We love that you, you made a way for us by your shed blood on Calvary, Lord. And so, God, we just pray in Jesus' name, pray that this testimony would continue to just go around the world and it would produce fruit everywhere that it goes, both in Canada and around even the Spanish-speaking parts of the world, Lord, that there would be many, many testimonies that would come from this seed being planted Uh, in the ground here today, God. So, yes, bless this family. Bless them abundantly, Lord. And I pray that, God, that they would just continue to see just day by day, taking them from glory to glory, seeing more and more uh, miracles coming, Lord, because they're continuing to partner with you. So bless them, and I'm thankful for the blessing that we've received as a result of hearing it today, God. We just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, sisters, Amen. thank you very much for coming Amen. today. This means so much to us that you're willing to do this. And, um, yeah, it's it's just so meaningful to us. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. Yeah. And church family, as we pray today, we just pray that you would um, grab a hold. It's like, as I've mentioned in other testimonies, where we take this moment, we reach out and touch the hem of the garment of Jesus. We say, he is close. He is near. Just like he was in our sister's hospital room. He is there to reach out to touch the hem of his garment and to just see his miraculous power flow. So bless you today and just know that God loves you and he has miraculous things for each one of us. So God bless.